Hillary Clinton, Tennessee, and the OK Corral are all on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is October 26, 2022. It is the 299th day of the year. You got 66 days left in 2022. It is the 35th day of fall. There are 56 days until winter. Today is National Tennessee Day. National Tennessee Day recognizes the volunteer state, the 16th state admitted into the union. This great state has the Great Smoky Mountains, great barbecue, blues, country music, and one of the most dangerous cities in the United States. Yes, Memphis. Tennessee is known as the gateway to the deep south. You can also find Graceland and the Grand Old Opry here in Tennessee. They got a serious musical history. I mean, Grand Old Opry, Nashville, all that stuff. Aretha Franklin was born in Memphis. Besides all that, you got waterfalls, trails, wildlife. It is a beautiful, beautiful state. They could just get rid of Memphis, maybe give it to Arkansas. They'd be doing pretty good. All right, let's see what else October 26 has given us. 1774, the American Revolution, the First Continental Congress adjourns in Philadelphia. 1813, the War of 1812, a combined force of British regulars, Canadian militia, and Mohawks defeat the United States Army at the Battle of Chateau Gay. 1825, the Erie Canal opens, allowing direct passage from the Hudson River to Lake Erie. <laughs> The Erie Canal is a modern marvel. I don't know how modern it is. It was completed in 1825, but it is an amazing feat for the time. The Erie Canal is a historic canal in upstate New York that runs east to west between the Hudson River and Lake Erie. It was completed in 1825, and the canal was the first navigatable waterway connecting the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes. This was a game changer. I mean, it brought down the amount of time it cost to get goods and people across the state of New York and beyond. Now here's some specifications of the Erie Canal. First of all, it's 351 miles long. It was originally 363. Guess they lost a few miles. The Erie Canal starts just north of Albany in a place called Waterford or right near Waterford. It passes Rome, New York, Rochester, and finally ends just north of Buffalo. We're actually kind of in Buffalo. Now it's got a lock system so that they could raise and lower the water levels and the lock is 45 feet in width which isn't terribly large so you're not going to be sending any major ocean liners or anything like that through there the first day it was used was may 17th 1821 that was 201 years ago it wasn't entirely completed by then obviously it got completed on october 26 1825 these days they don't have a lot of cargo going down there it's mostly recreational stuff since about the 1990s that being said, in recent years, they have a small but growing amount of cargo traffic in the Erie Canal. 1881, Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday participate in the gunfight at the OK Corral in Tombstone, Arizona. This legend has been going on since the day it happened. 1881, such a major event back then. 1942, World War II, in the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands during the Guadalcanal campaign, one U.S. aircraft carrier is sunk and another carrier is heavily damaged, while two Japanese carriers and one cruiser are heavily damaged. 1958, Pan American Airways makes its first commercial flight on a Boeing 707 from New York City to Paris. 2001, the United States passes the USA Patriot Act into law. 2003, the Cedar Fire, the third largest wildfire in California history, kills 15 people, consumes 250,000 acres, and destroys 2,200 homes around San Diego. Movies released on October 26th, 2014, Interstellar. This is a Christopher Nolan film about a team of astronauts who travel through a wormhole to try and save the human race. Gr pretty good movie. I've watched this a couple times. It's got Matthew McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, John Lithgow's in it, Michael Caine, Casey Affleck's in the movie, Jessica Chastain. Basically, global warming has made it so that no food's growing or anything like that, and the entire planet's just going downhill. In order to save the human race, they've built these starships that will take people to these different planets. Well, they send out like scientists to several different planets they hope will support life. Well, they'll signal back to Earth to send the people. This is a good planet. And it's all about, it's really interesting. If you ever get a chance, give that one a look. If you're not too up on science and how space travel works, I saw an interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson, that astrophysicist. 
they asked him how real this movie is, and he said theoretically they stuck to the science, what they know right now. Born on October 26, 1947, Hillary Clinton. First Lady of the United States from 1992 to 2000, she also served as the 67th U.S. Secretary of State under President Barack Obama from 2009 to 2013. She was also a U.S. Senator from New York from 2001 to 2009, and she ran for the presidency in 2016. She campaigned for Republican Richard Nixon and Barry Goldwater while serving on the student council at Maine East High School. She has been listed twice on the list of the 100 most influential lawyers in America. She became the first woman to be nominated for a major U.S. party as a presidential candidate. Her 2003 autobiography, Living History, sold more than 1 million copies in the first month and earned her a Grammy nomination for the Best Spoken Word album for an audio recording of a book. Died on October 26th, 1952, Hattie McDaniel, best known as the first African-American to receive an Academy Award, which she won for her role as Mammy in Gone with the Wind. She worked as a maid, a washroom attendant, and a cook when she couldn't get acting jobs. Now, how does this suck? She couldn't attend the Academy Awards ceremony to receive her Best Supporting Actress Award for Gone with the Wind because of segregation laws. She married George Langford in 1922, but he died shortly after their marriage. Her brother Sam McDaniel played in three Stooges movies, normally as a butler. She probably wouldn't have gotten the role of Mammy in Gone with the Wind if it wasn't for Clark Gable. He demanded that they cast her in the role. In August of 1950, McDaniel entered the hospital with a heart ailment. She was released in October to recuperate at home and was reported on January 3rd, 1951 as showing slight improvement in her recovery from a mild stroke. She died of breast cancer on October 26th, 1952 in the hospital of the Motion Picture House in Woodland Hills, California. Thousands of mourners turned out to celebrate her life and achievements. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a productive day, and be nice to each other.